Hey, thanks for tuning in to Dan Warner Media. My name is Dan Warner. Today we're going to be talking about what to wear to your audition. And I know that, you know, for some people that may sound like a no brainer. It's like, well, you wear, you know, whatever the character would wear. Yes. Uh, however, um, this is for all the lazy actors who uh, phone it in. Um, and you know who you are, and, and a lot of you are out there. And quite frankly, uh, everyone's done it from time to time. And that is gone, oh, good enough. Your wardrobe is important for a couple of reasons. One, it, it helps you. It helps you get into the character. Here's what the character would wear. Also, and I've spoken to this before, um, you should rehearse not in your wardrobe. You should rehearse in your street clothes, your regular clothes, your casual clothes, whatever you're wearing around the house. That's what you should rehearse in. Once you're ready to do your self-tape, that's when you should put your wardrobe on. And that's pretty important because that changes your character. That changes how you react to things and how you read your, your dialogue, quite frankly. So, um, I am going to uh, do a little demonstration, a little fashion show for you uh, as to what to wear uh, on an audition, and then we'll talk about it later. And, and listen, uh, I was going to say there, there's other things that, that help um, with the wardrobe. One, it helps you get into character better. Two, it sends a message to the casting director that you care, uh, that you give a crap about this project. You know, if, if you're playing a doctor and you wear a t-shirt, no, no, don't do that. You're an ass. You're, you know, the, the casting director is going to look at that and go, this guy, this guy doesn't give a crap about, or girl doesn't give a crap about my project. They're supposed to be a doctor. They're wearing a t-shirt. Don't, don't do that. Um, you know, get as close to the, listen, they always give you uh, a description of what the wardrobe should be. Sometimes it's a vague description, you know, upscale casual or casual or whatever, but put some thought into what you are, uh, what you're, what you're going to wear uh, for your self tape. Uh, it makes a difference. Trust me, it, it makes a difference. So it tells the casting director that you're serious and that you care. And again, they want to hire people who care about their projects. Uh, and the other thing it does, it helps you get into character. So that being said, y you want to go I would say you want to go above and beyond when it comes to wardrobe. Don't go over the top with, you know, something elaborate and all that. But just when I say go above and beyond, I mean think outside the box. I was traveling, uh, when was it? This last summer, I guess. I was in Northern California visiting family. And I had an audition that I had to put on tape. Now, when you're traveling, you can't bring your entire closet. So you have, I, I always bring essentials. I bring a shirt and a tie and a jacket. Um, Sometimes I don't bring a jacket, but I should, a, a, like a sports coat kind of thing. Um, in case you have a, you know, if you're, if you have an audition as an attorney, you got to wear a shirt and tie. You can't wear a polo shirt or a tank top. It's not going to work. Um, so I bring a, a few essentials. Well, this particular character was um, a Western. It was in a sort of set in the... Uh, I don't know if it was New Mexico or the South, but it, anyhow, this guy was supposed to be wearing sort of a Western jacket, uh, and he was sort of this, uh, uh, anyway, it doesn't matter, but he was supposed to be wearing a Western-type sports coat, a bolo tie, you know, the whole thing. Well, I didn't have a Western sports coat. I don't have one at my house. Uh, I certainly don't have one when I travel, and uh, my sister didn't have one in her closet. What I did was I got on the Googles and I checked out and found a Western wear store nearby. There was one three and a half miles away. So I went to the Western wear store and I found a great Western jacket and a great bolo tie. And then I found uh, what their return policy was. Yeah, I did that. So I bought the jacket, bought the tie, went back, did my audition the next day returned the jacket, tag was still on it, had the receipt, got my money back. I kept the tie because, you know, I wanted to patronize the store that I was just borrowing something from. Anyhow, I I'm not saying do that all the time. Uh, I was in a pinch and I really wanted this to book this job and I thought a Western jacket would really 
uh, set it off. And so uh, I actually booked the job. So there you have it, uh, thinking outside the box. Uh, maybe I should have kept the jacket, but it's an example of, hey, you've got to figure this out. If you don't have the exact wardrobe, maybe a friend, maybe a neighbor, maybe someone has you know, something uh, similar to what they're looking for. Usually you don't have to go crazy with with wardrobe usually it's very simple you know you're wearing a, a dress or a skirt or a you know a shirt and tie or uh you know if you're a coach you're wearing a polo shirt maybe a whistle i don't condone props but little ones like that are are fine anyway so you got to think outside the box i'm going to give you a little demonstration as to uh what to wear and what not to wear and and why and how and how it would look and why you should listen to me all the time about everything so check this out. Okay, so let's talk about wardrobe. Now, let's say that I had an audition for uh, uh, a cop. Now, a cop is a very specific character, obviously. Uh, not everyone has a, a police uniform or a cop uniform, but there are, uh, there are uh, stores out there. All you have to do is Google uh, any sort of um, uniform store, and they will have they will have police shirts uh, for sale to the public. And obviously you're not gonna have the badge and all the, all the right stuff, but you'll at least have the shirt. It at least gives them an idea. You can also get stuff. You can get little badges that don't say police on them, but look like a badge or security officer badge. And it looks pretty legit and it just lends credibility to your character. It also tells the casting director that um, that you're not phoning it in, that you went the extra mile uh, to get this uniform. So if you're playing a cop, you'd wear this, right? If you were a cop, you'd wear this. Easy enough, got this at a uniform store. This is, uh, this just says um, security. Like it's not, I went and had a name tag made. I bought this jewelry, it's a little antiquated, they don't use that anymore, but bang, instant cop. Way better than a t-shirt, obviously I would shave, uh, but there you have, there's that, right? Wear that, don't wear this. Uh, all right, the next one is, uh, oh, here's another easy one, and you can find it at any sort of costume store, uh, or you can order them online as a referee shirt. I get uh, referee auditions twice a year. I have, uh, right, instant referee, so, you know, I bought this shirt, I, I wear it twice a year. And listen, you, you get these things, you gather these things, it, you know, also now there's your Halloween costume. But twice a year I wear this and uh, I booked a Bose job uh, with Aaron Rodgers, probably because of my referee shirt. Yeah, so I bought a referee shirt and I use it twice a year. That's it, I'm not gonna wear this. Uh, if I'm playing a coach, you'd wear this. Right? If you were a coach, you'd wear this. Got a whistle. Again, don't need a whistle, but I have one, so I just throw it around my neck. I'd never blow it, but um, yeah, coach. Instant coach. This Or, or a t-shirt, like a gray t-shirt. Anything that your coach wore when you were in high school or college. Remember back, it's easy to remember. Google coach on the internet. They'll give you plenty of examples. There's gotta be something in your closet you can wear to make you look like a coach. Right, so if I am playing a doctor, uh, there's, a, there's a few different things that you can do. Usually doctors wear, you'd wear this. If you were a doctor, you'd wear this. Now, listen, I have a lab coat. You may not have a lab coat. You don't have to have a lab coat. Uh, lab coats are very inexpensive, however, and so, you know, you can just not wear the lab coat because this says doctor too. You know, wear a jacket, sports coat or something, but. Lab coats are, are very inexpensive, less than $20, I think, online. You can get a, a cheap lab coat. Just be careful with your lighting because sometimes it will blow out your light and depends on your light. But um, lab coats are, they're great. Easy to have, easy to own, easy to operate. Uh, you can roll your sleeves up, you can keep them down. You know, when's the last time you went to the doctor? You just, you figure that out. Also, sports coat, lawyer, right, or defendant or, you know, businessman, or CEO. Just wear the appropriate clothes. Um, just go, make an effort 
uh, to make your wardrobe stand out so that you uh, are, are more comfortable in your character. It makes a big difference. Now, if you have a lab coat, great. If you don't, that's fine too. Just the shirt and the tie uh, will work. So, you know, don't wear a plain t-shirt or a tank top or anything like that because all these other outfits look fantastic and it tells the casting director that you're serious about being an actor, you're, you're, you're serious about your career, your craft, uh, and you're thinking outside the box. And I gotta tell you, there's times where the wardrobe will get you the job. They'll go, oh, they went out of their way to do this, let's call them in, or at least for a callback. But they'll always remember you. So, there you have it. So there you have it, the do's and don'ts of wardrobe and the importance of wearing them. You saw the, the different outfits and, and how it makes a difference. You know, if you're not wearing the right thing, it, it takes the casting director out of the scene a little bit. You know, you, know, you don't want to have them thinking about anything other than your performance, your noggin, your face right there. That's what you want them concentrating on. You don't want them thinking, what's that in the background? You don't want them thinking, why is he wearing a baseball shirt? Like, you don't, no, none of that. So, um, you know, be smart, do your homework, pick out your wardrobe as soon as you get your audition and have that out of the way and have it ready. You know, if you don't do it right away, and you wait till the last minute and you gotta get your tape in and you gotta supposed to get it in early and all this stuff. And then the shirt that you wanted is in the hamper and it's dirty and you gotta wash it. And then, then there goes that. And then you go, oh, well, good enough. I'll wear this instead. No, don't do that. Uh, if this was useful to you, uh, hit the like button, uh, share and tell all your friends if you have any questions or comments about anything I have shared with you today. Please leave them in the questions and comments section down below. Uh, visit my site, danwarnermedia.com. Uh, I do private coaching. I have a really fantastic how to get an agent introduction letter, which is uh, the most important tool you can have when you're looking for an agent is an introduction letter. You've got you've to be able to introduce yourself and get your introduction letter read instead of having it go into the recycle bin because then you won't get an agent. So uh, visit my site. I've got all the stuff there, uh, tips and tutorials and all kinds of cool stuff. Um, that's it. See you next time on another episode of uh, The Brady Bunch. Have I done The Brady Bunch yet? God, I always think I've done these shows, but maybe not. I'm gonna have The Brady Bunch theme song stuck in my head. <laughs>